it is no 615 november 16th 2020 and this is time to start the committee of the whole meeting we are in compliance with the open meetings act nebraska revised statute 84-1407 current copy of the act is available at this room madam clerk would you please call the roll augustine schulte bar here hamer here jablonski here Creek. uh we'll just preface this by saying uh, about a year and a half ago we formed a strategic vision committee for the fire department and it dealt with overarching issues and needs of the fire department as it looks forward uh, some of the overarching needs included potential code changes and limitations that were were currently in place and at the same time we were being asked to look at the code anyway for changes so the strategic vision committee formed a reorganizational subcommittee uh, consisted of several members uh, both new and old both volunteer and career including uh, pat miller natalie porter eric kluber a career lieutenant eric morgan uh, ryan sabata uh, charlie siegel uh, uh, craig kuchera etc so quite a quite a well-rounded group of people from different uh, age groups experience and uh, status in the department um, our overall strategy as we we went through this and we met several times early this year before and late last year before COVID hit and slowed us all the way down um, but our overall strategy was to simplify the code and align, align it with comparable cities to allow the city to be nimble based on the needs actually to allow the code to be nimble based on the needs of the city as it grows and times change to remove redundancies with state law <clears throat> to include both career and volunteer in references where applicable and treat the entire organization as a singular organization the subcommittee working on this reviewed city codes from north platte norfolk beatrice and hastings as well as others and uh, the specific recommended changes include include adopting a code similar to that of beatrice to shorten simplify and streamline as much as possible and to include necessary local adaptations fixes etc um, uh, just a note uh, beatrice and several of our comparable cities have uh, codes that deal with the fire department that are one to two pages in length <laughs> at most <laughs> ours was many pages long and contained a lot of detail and that detail didn't allow it to be very nimble as far as uh, uh, changes and flexibility goes with the future <clears throat> so I, what I plan on doing and this is just in in draft form still it is still in front of uh, the city attorney uh, reviewing everything uh, obviously there was some uh, issues there with COVID as well that slowed things down um, but he's reviewing it as well and putting it into final language and form so you guys can uh, actually officially review it at a later date <clears throat> um, but I'm going to go through this and as you see the light blue sections are uh, the existing city code and then below that in each area are the uh, italicized words are what the committee felt it should be replaced with <clears throat> so in 33.01 fire department created in general simplifies the code and aligns it with comparable cities allows the city to be nimble based on the needs of the city as it grows and times change the existing code says there is hereby created a fire department for the city and there is created the office of the chief of the fire department assistant chief and fire training and safety officer the fire department shall include the above stated officers as well as volunteer firefighters and paid employees of the city department the propose would be to replace it with in its entirety not just take out little parts here and there but in entirety there is hereby created a fire department for the city which shall consist of a fire chief and as many officers and firefighters as is deemed appropriate by the mayor and city council whether they be volunteer or career the fire chief shall be appointed by the mayor subject to the approval of the city council from a list of suitable persons supplied by the civil service commission the fire chief shall have such powers and authority and shall perform such duties as are provided by the provisions of this code state law and city ordinances rules and regulations and that actually takes some that was in some latter bits of the code and moves it into this forward area so that it can then reduce the size of those areas later on 
Um, also, I'll mention, please interrupt me if you have any questions. <clears throat> Chief, uh, yes. I guess it says as many officers and firefighters as deemed appropriate by the mayor and city council. So are you bringing these officers and firefighters to us? Or, or are we going to set some rules that say you can have two officers or you can have four firefighters? Or, or is and this, this is code that leaves that kind of up to not only you uh, and the mayor, but the atmosphere at the time. So as needs change, if you guys feel that you need to, to clamp down and make hard rules, and some, some departments do have hard and fast rules on both uh, career numbers and volunteer numbers by uh, uh, passing uh, resolutions and so forth, you could go that way or you could just leave it uh, up to the mayor and, uh, uh, and then, of course, with your approval of, as to how many need to be hired and or kept as volunteers at any time. So we could challenge your, yes. your program as far as you, are you wanting more people, we could challenge that. Right, yep. Well, I, I guess I would mention, I think we always have the challenge at our power with the budget. So mm -hmm. the budget, which yeah. is the recommendation of the True. chief to bring forward what he needs, and the majority of the firefighters budget, firefighter de department's budget is personnel. So that would be, in my mind, yeah, the the uh, the hammer that we would have to talk about personnel and and and, and challenge what is being brought forth. He would need to come to the exactly to the budget exactly. meeting and say, "This is what I need," and then we can say yes or no, or you know, no, or say, yeah. you know, "Is that three people or four? And we say, "No, oh, we can only get by with two or or whatever." I mean, I I see <clears> that as the give and take process, which really we have in place already anyway. Very true. Any more questions on that? Okay. Um, 33.02, companies formation. Uh, existing says, whenever it shall be deemed necessary by the mayor and city council, additional fire companies may be organized in such numbers and by such methods as the city council may, by resolution direct and recommendations as to necessity for the additional companies may be made to the city council by the fire department or its executive officers However, no such company shall be formed with less than 12, no more than 25 members. <clears throat> so this originates, a lot of it originates from the late 1800s, early 1900s, where they had uh, militia by conscription. And if you were a volunteer firefighter, you weren't subject to being drafted. So they limited it to 25 members per company. But they didn't say how many companies you could have <laughs> in the state law. So uh, it also, strictly addresses the volunteer side of the department and it doesn't define what companies really are <clears throat> so uh, that one we were proposing to repeal in its entirety and then where state law exists where it, where it still deals with 25 members even though it hasn't really been followed it's kind of like spitting on the sidewalk uh, n nobody really follows it very closely at all anymore and no one cares. So, but where it, where it state law exists, there's no need to restate it in this in the city code. We felt, and again, it's in front of the the city attorney to help us make that determination. Thirty-three point zero two, duties of chief and officers. This one would be created and new, so there's no existing language. So where the committee felt. This one should be worded as the fire chief shall have full control and supervision over all career and volunteer firefighters subject to the authority of the mayor and city council and the fire chief shall be accountable to the mayor and city council for the proper and faithful performance of their duties. In the absence or inability of the fire chief or during such hours of the day as the fire chief may be off duty, the fire chief's powers and duties shall be exercised by the chief's designee. <clears throat> officers duties and delegations it should be noted that they're further detailed in fire department standard operating procedure job descriptions etc any questions on that section who, who yes, would be your designee it uh, example for example when Pat and I both had knee surgery uh, a couple weeks ago uh, I designated the on-duty lieutenants to be acting chief during that time period, which actually was uh, uh, very much needed and, and worked out. I guess my question would be, would that be the standard practice or would, would if Pat was available, the assistant chief? Typically we kind of 
share back and forth the, the on-duty chief duties anyway, uh, as far, especially as far as call response go. But if there was a, for example, in the future, there was a deputy chief or someone like that, it might be that person uh, if they were uh, a 24-hour career employee. <coughs> And again, this leaves it relatively nimble to do it through standard operating procedure and practice rather than hard coding it into the. This comment has nothing to do with the, or the proposals that are in front of us, but having heard you say when you and Pat had your knee surgeries uh, at the same time not too long ago, I guess I would hope most of the time you talk about those things and you both don't <laughs> yeah. have surgeries that take you out of unless it's an emergency. Well, mine was planned quite a while ahead uh, and his was an emergency. <laughs> well, that answers it. That, an that answers the question yeah. I said, you know, if it was only so. if it was an emergency. So, yes. Okay. And it was well communicated from what I had seen so <laughs> across. Not not uh, meant to happen that way, that's for sure. Uh 33.04 organization uh volunteer fire department. This was just organization prior, but we decided to change this uh, particular uh, chapter to just talk about the volunteer fire department side and then uh, talk about the rest of the department elsewhere because it deals with the volunteer fire department officers, how they're appointed and elected and so forth. <clears throat> um, it was heavily amended to remove language allowing each company to make its own rules, uniforms, etc. cetera. Um, uh, SOP and bylaws address those areas department-wide and it really has for years and it also addresses the ability for the volunteer fire department to have control of its own funds. <clears throat> Existing language said each company of the fire department shall perfect and maintain its own organization, determine and elect its own officers and adopt its own regulations, governing activities of its members in their relation to the company as may be necessary to promote the efficiency of that company. The fire department as a whole shall either through its action by its entire membership or through a board of control composed of representatives chosen by the several companies perfect and maintain its own organization, elect its own officers except chief, assistant chief and fire training and safety officer who shall be chosen as here and after provided and adopt its own regulations affecting the activities of individual members and companies in their relation to the department. <clears throat> the department or companies may determine the uniforms to be worn and no person other than a member shall be permitted to wear the uniforms. In all matters referred to in this section, however, the department and the company shall be subject to control, direction, and approval of mayor and city council. So <clears throat> the proposed language is the organization of the volunteer firefighter shall be known as the Columbus Volunteer Fire Department and shall be a part of the fire department of the city. In all matters referred to in this section, however, the volunteer fire department and the companies thereof shall be subject to the control, direction, and approval of the fire chief. The volunteer fire department shall be allowed to elect executive and financial officers for the organization, notwithstanding its own constitution and bylaws and state law, raise funds for its fraternal benefit and keep bank accounts for the same. Um, refers to Nebraska revised statute 35-901, volunteer fire department's trust fund established uh, that's where it defines that the volunteer fire department can have a trust fund irrespective of other city uh, general fund and accounts. Um, and you'll see some yellow highlights there where we're kind of posing a question to the to the city attorney. Should we reword that uh, to specifically state volunteer fire department trust fund in there? So he is reviewing that. Any questions on that section? Has, it, has there been a problem in the past with uh, the use of the volunteer department, fire department's funds? Not really, but uh, we wanted to make sure it was defined in here so that there was no question that they could have their funds. Um, uh, I have recommended to them that they uh, uh, contact some legal counsel because they have they have multiple checking accounts. I just want to make sure that they're they're doing it appropriately and making sure that that all falls under that fire department trust fund uh, law the way it's written. Any other questions? <clears throat> 33.05 employment of firefighters. 
It removed the language that says two or more, added civil service where applicable to process, and added union contract as part of the disciplinary process. Existing language says the mayor and city council are hereby authorized to employ two or more paid firefighters selected from the candidates recommended by the fire chief or the chief of the fire department, excuse me, the firefighters to be under the immediate control of the fire chief, but at all times to be subject to orders of mayor and city council. The tenure of a paid firefighter shall be only during good behavior. <clears throat> Any disciplinary action in regard to a paid firefighter shall be as provided by the city personnel policy manual and or the Nebraska Civil Service Act. The proposed language is the mayor and city council are hereby authorized to employ paid firefighters selected from candidates recommended by the chief of the fire department, the list of which is supplied by the Civil Service Commission. The paid firefighters are to be under control, direction, and approval of the fire chief. Any disciplinary action in regard to a paid firefighter shall be as provided by the city personnel manual, the Nebraska Civil Service Act, and the collective bargaining agreement. Any questions on that one? How long has it been since we've only had two firefighters? <laughs> Quite a while, I think. <laughs> I think that was put in by the reference there in the 1963 code, so. <clears throat> Any other questions on that one? Okay, 33.06, appointment of volunteer officers. Um, we simplified this one as much as we could, moved to a two year term for our, both the assistant chief and training and safety officer, as well as a change in the selection and appointment process. We left the internal process details to the bylaws, SOP, et cetera and removed references to part-time position so as not to compromise volunteer status. Uh, it'll need a lot of a re review by the city attorney for our language. <clears throat> uh, changes the title to appointment of volunteer officers. Um, so existing, uh, basically, um, the chief of the fire department, assistant chief, and fire training and safety officer shall, at a regular meeting of the city council, prior to the first day of May of each year, be appointed by the mayor, subject to the approval of the city council, and shall hold office for one year until the appointment and qualification of the successor. All of the positions shall be held as a part-time position subject to contractual obligations, which the appointed individual shall enter into between the city and themselves prior to the appointment of the individuals to their term. Prior to the time of the appointments, the volunteer fire department shall recommend to the mayor and city council three of the members of the department for such offices who prior to having their name submitted to the mayor and city council and prior to the appointment of the mayor and city council shall on or before March 1 ex execute a contract prepared and tendered by the city defining the individual's duties and obligations and if found otherwise qualified shall be appointed. In determining the qualifications of those individuals recommended by the department, the mayor and city council shall consider those factors relating to the suitability of the individuals which shall include but not be limited to an evaluation of their previous job performance, compliance with the city code, and compliance with their contractual obligations between the city and said individuals. <clears throat> the officers shall receive a stipend as determined and approved by the mayor and city council. The officers shall receive the same benefit package as provided to other volunteer firefighters. Group health insurance and other benefits available to regular part-time and full-time employees are not applicable to volunteer firefighter officers. <clears throat> so um, what we kind of move to in this is uh, if we're setting, if we're allowed to set uh, qualifications for those positions by SOP and policy in the fire department, we actually have, have put some of those things forth already, um, uh, just waiting for approval of these code changes by city council and then we can enact those include things like firefighter one firefighter two fire officer one etc for those higher level officers and then they would be chosen uh, every other year rather than yearly and uh, uh, the next section uh, kind of explains that appointment process <clears throat> the mayor and city council are hereby authorized to appoint the assistant chief and training and safety officer as selected by the fire department and are to be under control and direction of the fire chief. The assistant chief is recommended by popular vote of the volunteer fire department in January of every even numbered year. The training safety officer is recommended by the fire chief 
in January of every odd numbered year with approval of the volunteer department and bargaining unit of the paid firefighters. The assistant chief and training safety officer shall at a regular meeting of the city council prior to the first day of May of each year be appointed by the mayor subject to the approval of the council and shall hold office for two years until the appointment and or qualification of the successor. And section B we would leave unchanged. So it, <clears throat> as you can see, uh, it, the volunteer fire chief is still an elected officer by the volunteers on every even numbered year. The training safety officer is appointed by the fire chief with approval by the volunteers and the career firefighters because they both have to work with that individual. Chief, yes, sir. Uh, like you mentioned in the past, the the training officer was elected by popular vote as well. What is your intentions of for the training officer? Is that to come from the volunteer ranks or? Yeah, they would still be a volunteer for now until, and that would take other amendment to this code because they're still defined as a volunteer in here. So you would have to defy, decide if they ever go to a, like a career full-time position. So they will have to come from the volunteers, but minimum qualifications will be uh, firefighter one, firefighter two, instructor one, and a couple of those kind of uh, requirements and uh, uh, something that shows that they can do the job. Do you have those kinds of people available now? or is it are Yes, and uh, we've got several volunteers now over the past couple of years that have gone all the way through firefighter two, uh, including Natalie. Um, <clears throat> and we will have some that have to take classes like instructor one. We already have some of those as well. Uh, but we did decide internally that, especially the first year or two till we get up and going with this, that if we get somebody that's most of the way there, that is determined to get the rest of the way there early on in the process, that that would be acceptable. I guess my question was, it was just, I would hope it wouldn't be something that would limit us to not being able to appoint a volunteer and, and in turn be stuck where we had to uh, make it a career position? <clears throat> no, it, uh, it actually is still defined as a volunteer officer in here, you know, the way it, okay. it has to come from them. Any other questions about that section? Again, there we tried to cut the language down a lot. <clears throat> um, 33.08 assistant fire chief fire training and safety officer duties succession and absence of the fire chief detailed in 33.02 as well as SOP and job descriptions ICS roles incident command system in other words and processes on scene will not change if uh, long for term fire chief will name an acting uh, chief with the approval of the mayor or mayor will choose until resolved or successor is hired or promoted. <clears throat> so uh, this one's got just some line outs and additions. So uh, it shall be the duty of the assistant chief of the fire department to assist the chief in matters pertaining to the, to the fire department. We would strike and to exercise the powers and duties of the chief during the absence or disability of the latter, latter officer because that's defined earlier. Shall be the duty of the fire training and safety officer to assist the chief and assistant chief in the performance of their duties in the fire training safety officer shall be shall coordinate all fire practice and training activities and shall chair the fire department safety committee uh, the training safety officer shall be regarded at the same rank level as captain of the fire department <clears throat> and here i'm going to show you a little uh, another graphic to help explain what we're talking about we had looked at the organizational chart uh, pretty seriously for a lot of this and over several times uh, to try to simplify it. When I, early on in this process, asked if someone could draw the organizational chart of the fire department, nobody could. Um, so we really wanted to simplify it a lot and make it more effective. Um, so as you can see over on the left-hand side, there's gray, green, and red boxes. That's black, green, and red shifts. Um, for now, there's a lieutenant in, in charge of each of those shifts. But as we move forward, especially as we go towards two stations, I would like to see that uh, lieutenant promoted to a captain's position com in comparison with our comparables. So those three individuals would 
uh, move up in rank, so to speak. Um, they're already doing that job now uh, as their comparable captains and other departments of our size. And then uh, once two stations were staffed to create a lieutenant position at the op opposite station, the captain would still have be more or less the shift supervisor. Lieutenant at the other station would answer to him and, and help uh, the workflow work throughout the day as well as the incident command system work well upon calls. <clears throat> Over on the right hand side you'll see the uh, blue boxes. Um, there are actually currently four volunteer companies, uh, Hose 1, Hose 2, uh, the Bissells, and the Pioneer Hook and Ladder Company. Each one of those companies currently has a captain, a junior captain, a lieutenant, and then the firefighters under them. Well, a lot of those officers didn't really have a lot of duties to actually take on and do, and, and it was kind of top heavy. <clears throat> so uh, the group felt that to make it uh, more streamlined, we put a, a captain in charge of each two companies, put, keep a lieutenant in charge of each uh, individual company, and actually give them a lot more specific job duties to do, like contact, um, uh, uh, personnel type related issues and in charge of them on uh, uh, training duties etc <clears throat> give them actual job description uh, it also helps align all the way across the board captains with captains lieutenants with lieutenants whether they're on the career side or volunteer side makes the organ chart organizational chart very simple and easy to follow whether you're off scene or on an emergency scene um, and clear over on the right, the training safety officer would be uh, at the relative same rank as all the other captains. There, at the top you will see there's the chief and volunteer chief and we're uh, anticipating at some point down the road simple, uh, similar to some of our comparables, uh, potentially a deputy chief. And again, this is a proposed organizational chart. This is not written into the city code. It's a direction, uh, a vision for the department in the future. <clears throat> Any questions on that? Okay. 33.13, it had something in there about uh, equipment that was designated for rural use. There really isn't any such thing, and that's handled by a written agreement with the Rural Fire District. So the uh, thought was to repeal that in its entirety. 33.28 is the only remaining uh, article, and it uh, had to do with resisting fire police, but um, earlier in uh, one of the articles it said something about wearing a fire fire's uniform un unauthorized. Um, so this would address that and input in uh, language about impersonating a firefighter. And uh, the existing <coughs> language said, any person who shall resist an active member of the fire department during at all fires at which the fire department or any portion thereof is on duty at such time shall be subject to similar penalty as for resisting the police. <clears throat> and we would like to add, any person who shall impersonate an active member of the fire department, including wearing of the uniform, shall be subject to similar penalty as for impersonating a police officer. <clears throat> Questions on that? Uniform, are you saying like dress white, white shirt and pants? Or, or for example, if someone went into an establishment where a business was on a fire scene wearing a fire department t-shirt they got from their cousin and decided they wanted to try to run things or get in the way. And that they, would only they pertain could be, to incidents, They could be arrested. Right? Pardon? That would only pertain to an incident such as a fire or yeah. a medical call or something yes. like that. Yes. Right. I, I'm just kind of clarifying because I know there's a lot of shirts out there that volunteers have, past volunteers, plus they have the, the right. jackets that they get. Yeah, and we wouldn't, we wouldn't bother them, but there are, <clears throat> there are some that I know of, not in this town, but in other towns <laughs> that have used that to their advantage to gain access to certain events and so forth. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll follow your direction. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, want to limit that. And that is it. So any overall questions? How did the, the city attorney give you any kind of a timeline, Captain or Chief? I'm sorry. Um, not really. Mean? I know he's working on this and a lot of other things right now. And he's trying to catch up from his little break. <laughs> yeah. 
So we, we would like to get it in as soon as possible. Obviously, the fire department uh, elections are coming up beginning of the year. So it'd be nice if it was in by then. But if it's not, we can work around it. So council members, other questions? Carolyn. I got a question. Come on up, Pat. I ain't walking near No, I was going to say, Chief's moving a lot better than you are. <laughs> question I got for one of the chief I'm Pat Miller assistant fire chief for those of you that don't know do you have a copy of what we presented to the department back in July yes. the copy I got does not have I, I mean I'm missing a page or something because it doesn't have everything that you've got on the proposed changes that you just put here no. <laughs> that's why I'm asking that the one you got emailed earlier today or? well I've had this one but yeah the one that got emailed is the same one but the one that we uh, looked at at the department meeting that I have a copy of, you know, does not have all of these changes, crossed off things and stuff in there. So I, that's why I was wondering if you had one. Yeah, this is the same one we voted on. I haven't changed oh, This one here is dated October 27th, and the other one was dated July, four, July 14th. I have a copy of that as well. <coughs> well, there, like, there. One here can't do that. <laughs> Ten twenty-seven. So. Uh, thirty-three oh two is not in there, and that's why I'm wondering if I'm missing a page. I think you're just missing a page. And you know some of the. Uh, I have so one two we, chief. We talked about it in that meeting that there was a page missing out of some of the copies that were handed. Yeah, out. I have the same one that was from the meeting. That was thirty-three oh one's missing. Thirty-three oh two. Yeah. You know, and that's that's what I was wondering. You know, I mean, so we went over them on the on the projector that night, and some people in the meeting said, "I don't have that page or, or whatever." Okay, because I know there's work through it. some people that have seen what you got right there that you're presenting have got some questions as to what's the difference. You know, why why do we have? You know, this, this was the same one that was ran on the on the projector and everything okay, that night so that's not the one that we got paper copies of everybody that that's what people are you know we need paper copies for yeah. the department this too. has them all if you need to take it and make copies yeah. i'm going right here <laughs> maybe well, after just the, make sure you get it the, on the same page the city yeah. attorney's done reviewing does this come back to the intention to come back to yeah, the department approve. before it comes back to the council we could do it that way or it could come straight here it's up to you Personally, I would like to it see the. Suggested that happens. I'd like to see the whole department. Yeah. Get it again, review it. You know, make sure everybody's on board. I mean, that that's my my concern. So. Just would make sense. Okay. Yeah. Yep. That's all I got. Very so. good. Thank you, Pat. Thank you. Any other questions for the the chief? Stand adjourned. Thanks, chief. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for. It looks like a lot of work. <laughs> so, a lot of meetings. But it's exciting. in the midst of COVID, I'm sure it was. Yeah. <laughs>